We're gonna do something a little different today, taking a pouncer and a 16 by 20 inch stretch canvas. I have the canvas flat on my desk so we can bounce in this texture. We're going to do a tunnel effect. I'm starting with some white and on the left hand side of the canvas towards the middle, I'm going to do a white circle. And then with the white still on the sponge, I'm dipping into purple and doing a couple inches thick of a curve around the top. I'm gonna to go back in with a little bit more white and blend where the white meets the purple. Purple. And then with all those colors still on the sponge, dip into some teal. We're going from light to dark on the outside edge. So I'm gonna do that a couple inches thick around the edge. The more you bounce, the more you'll be able to get more of a texture instead of just a bunch of circles. So play around with it. I'm also gonna take some dark navy and even a little bit of black and fill in the outside edge, still keeping with the curve. So I'm gonna curve it all the way up to the corner on the other side there and then work on uh, blending it basically. Go back with the previous colors and just bounce in where the colors meet each other. You don't want perfectly straight lines, but as long as you're keeping with all the colors on your sponge, you'll have a gradient. I don't wanna go in with super dark paint in the white though, so I wiped most of it off. There's still hints of all the colors on there, but I am going to bounce in that white just so it has a little bit more color. Ooh, I like that. It's almost like a fade, awesome. And then again, blend along the lines where like the white meets the purple, that's what I'm doing here. And keep playing around with it. The more you play with it, the cooler it becomes. Now I'm gonna take a mop brush with some black and navy from that outside edge and add some ground. We're gonna have a path going through this tunnel. So I'm gonna do some short strokes up towards the middle of that white circle and do wider strokes as it gets towards the bottom of the canvas all the way until you're reaching all the way across the bottom of the canvas right there. I'm gonna make it look like the tunnel turns a little bit in that back edge. So make that point a little bit longer at the very back. Ooh, I like that. Now I'm gonna dry the texture and all the paint really good. I want my path to be a little bit darker, so I'm gonna do a second coat there. Let's even add some teal from the background in there. Ooh, I like that. It's like the tunnel is reflecting on the ground. Perfect. This is very abstract today. Now, before I put this back up on an easel, I am going to start my tree, just taking some dark brown and tan on a medium round brush. I'm gonna do on the very edge of the left-hand side, a tree trunk and then fan out the bottom to look like it has roots like that. Perfect. All right, let's do some branches with a medium round brush again. I'm going to pull out a couple branches that are very long. They go all the way across the canvas, but we're gonna do blooms again, like in the cherry blossom painting. So they're very heavy branches too. They kind of hang down. They're going off the page. Be as detailed as you want with it. Make sure you are pulling out in a V shape. And don't forget to do highlighting and shading on your trunk. I even added black pieced in with my brown and tan on the trunk and added some tan highlights to my branches. There we go. And then we're gonna paint some lanterns. So I'm doing two black lines coming up from the ground. The one towards the right hand side is a little bit thicker and a little bit taller than the one towards the middle for perspective. And I'm going to do two bases. So like a little triangle at the bottom with a curved base. That's the easiest way I would do a lantern base, but you can design it however you want. And then towards the top of the lantern, I'm gonna do a horizontal line that's slightly longer on the left-hand side. Do two little black dots on the ends of those. And then at the tips, I'm going to give them little triangles. Again, there's so many different kinds of lanterns. You can design it however you want. I'm gonna add a little doojiggy here to hang the lantern off. Just a little line and triangle towards that left-hand side of the line. Do this the same way, longer on the left-hand side to hang the lantern part. There we go. Looks like a little top hat. And then I'm even gonna make it really fancy doing some swirly lines. I'm gonna do this design to each of my lanterns. I've seen so many different kinds. This just reminds me of the decorative metal ones you see sometimes in people's front yards or even in a fancy park. There we go. And then I'm going to take some white paint on the detail brush and to each lantern add a triangle hanging off of it, just like that. 
Okay, you could leave them this way, but I really want them to stand out, so I'm taking some gray paint and adding some highlighting to all of the parts that are supposed to be metal. So the swirly parts, the pole, the triangles, even the part that holds the lantern onto it. I'm gonna do that. I like the contrast, but if it's too much, you can blend it in with a little bit of black too. And each of the lanterns, I'm also going to fix them up. You can curve them a little bit more if you want them to be round. I'm gonna add a little design in there, maybe even a little dot at the tip and a line. There we go, I'm starting to like them, they're cute. Let's even do some little curves at the top here. Ooh, those are cool. I like it, super fancy, okay. Now, because the lanterns would be on, you would see a little bit of a bright light shining on the ground. So I'm just taking my medium round brush and some white paint and fading in. I'm almost dry brushing in a little bit of white underneath each of them. Okay, so now we're gonna use the back end of a skewer again and do some more blossoms or flower blooms like we did in the cherry blossom painting. Just tapping in some texture with the back end and some white paint. I'm only gonna do white for some contrast today. I think pink would be too many colors in this because the background is already colorful. But again, I'm gonna cover all around the branches and even have some almost finger-like shapes coming down off of them because the blooms are hanging off of the branches. You could use your sea sponge again if you would like, but I like how much control the skewer gives you. But warning, it is a very tedious process. So if you have the time, it is totally worth it. But if not, you could just take your sea sponge and add them on there. I'm actually gonna take my sea sponge and bounce in some blooms across the bottom of my canvas because they would be the ones that would have fallen off the tree and I'm even going to add a little bit of texture on the top. Now, here's something you can do. I decided I want my purple to be a little bit more curved in the middle, so I just took my sponge again and fixed it. Only problem with that is you do have to paint back in any like detail you did, but look at that. That's the great beauty about acrylic paint. You can paint over whatever you don't want and then just fix it. So I was adding the texture back into my tree trunk and a couple extra blooms. There we go. Have fun with this one, make it your own. I can't wait to see how everybody's turns out. And if you like this painting, follow me for more.